Welcome to Are You in the Know, an educational podcast brought to you by the Racine Unified School District. I'm Emily DeBaker, Chief of Staff, and I'm thrilled to be helping keep you in the know of all things RUSD. Consider this the inside scoop to what's happening in our schools, an opportunity to get to know some of our incredible staff, and even hear from some of our amazingly talented students, which is what we're bringing you here today. We're joined by three members of the class of 2024, one from each of our academies of Racine High Schools. I want to welcome Corbin Laverne from Park High School, yep. Tamara Nadelkovich from Case High School, and Amanda Cheska from Horlick High School. Thanks so much for joining me here today, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're also joined by Carrie Mori. Carrie, you're the Academy and Transformation Coordinator for the Academies of Racine. Thank you for being here as well. Absolutely. So first of all, hello. How is everyone doing? It's May. The school year has almost come to an end. How how are things going? It's crazy how fast it went by. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd have to agree. But it's been good. That is good. Carrie, we we talked, I kind of introed it and said that we had our students here from our academies of Racine High Schools. Before we kind of dive into their background, um, and some highlights from their high school journeys and their journeys in Racine Unified. Can you share with us a little bit um, of background about what the Academies of Racine are? Yeah, so the Academies of Racine has actually expanded now from sixth grade through 12th grade. Um, but these students had the high school experience starting with ninth grade. And it's really about exposing students to all of the different opportunities that are available to them in their local community after they graduate from high school. So they are choosing a pathway after their ninth grade year. Um, they're taking sequential courses related to that career cluster. And through that, they're experiencing a lot of things about that pathway. Um, they're earning dual credits. They're earning certifications. They have opportunities to work in that atmosphere through youth apprenticeships. They are doing job shadows and site visits. So it takes what any student would get in a traditional high school, but we just have a more structured, streamlined process so that by the time they graduate, our students either know that I didn't like this at all and I wanna do something completely different than I thought I wanted to do, or I love this. I know exactly what I want to do, and I'm completely prepared and in advance of my peers from other schools. That's amazing. I wish that those opportunities were around when I was in high school, when we were in high school. I feel like they just set kids up for success so much better. Um, so let's, I want to hear, you know, directly from you guys. Um, we'll start uh, over at uh, Case High School. So, um, Tamara, you completed three pathways. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the academy that you chose and, and the pathways that you have completed and why? Yeah, so coming into high school, obviously for us three, it was kind of COVID year. So since I wasn't really sure and really had a passion for anything at that time, I decided to go into business because in every company, anything in the world, there is business related. So that way I can learn general business, accounting, marketing, finance, and at case, all those things were provided. So I was able to join and like do classes to learn those things for in college and for my future for jobs as well. That's awesome. Um, you were one of 63 seniors who earned 12 um, or more dual or college credits. So yeah, and 16, or one of just 16 to earn 20 or more, which is a grand total of 32 college credits. Yeah, which is equivalent to uh, a year and a half of college. College, yeah. You haven't even walked in the door yet. What's what's the drive? What's the motivation behind that? I mean. I didn't really have anything, like I said, in set, but I really was like coming into high school, wanted to be involved with things. Mm -hmm. So by joining like clubs, like for example, like DECA and BIDA, there were classes to go along with those, which I got to experience and really glad I got to because I got to learn a lot from it, as well as those classes were classes to take in college. So it was kind of a nice way to get experience of college classes in high school. So I can't believe that you have much of it, but what yes. do you like to do in your free time? In the free time, usually I'm kind of just out with fr friends and family and stuff like that. But with college coming around the corner, it's more school focused and just like what my future plans are. Mm -hmm. So that's right now it's college and 
going on now focusing on, but. Well, you're definitely ahead of the game in that. So yes. That's awesome. <laughs> what would you say is maybe one of the most um, memorable highlights of your high school career? Um, Besides this podcast, of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, obviously, like I said before, it was a little different for all of us, but we still got to experience and just make the best out of it for like school events. And I'm just really glad, even though it was different, we got to experience like football games, basketball games, but also clubs like for coming in my freshman year. I know I'm a part of Linker as well. So kind of just enjoying and like helping the freshmen while coming in. I didn't get much of that, but as I joined Linker to help freshmen, I got to kind of experience it with them, but that's awesome. Very cool. Well, I uh, congratulate you on all the successes yeah, that you've had you. and have no doubt that your that your future is very bright. Um, let's go on to Amanda Horry Lake High School in the health sciences pathway. Just kind of talk about the direction um, that you chose to go into that pathway. Um, okay, so my freshman year, um, I kind of also like wasn't sure like what I wanted to exactly do because of COVID and whatnot. Um, but I ended up choosing health services and aviation going into um, biomedical sciences my um, sophomore year. Because um, I knew I like wanted to do something um, medical related, but at the same time, I was still kind of hooked on doing uh, marine biology. So I kind of just wanted to get a feel for it. And I really did enjoy the class. Like we got so many like hands-on skills. Um, we even got to learn how to like draw blood and it was just, it was really good. Um, but as like the year went on, I wanted to like focus more so like what I I really, like what I really wanted to do in college. And um, I knew that marine biology just, it didn't have a high demand um, in the workforce and I wasn't like extremely passionate for it. Um, so I was kind of like scrambling and like I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. And I found that I really enjoyed nursing. Um, and because of that, my junior and senior year, I switched to the health services pathway where we did um, like we we did more labs and we got to visit um, hospitals. And I even got my CNA certification um, last year into this year um, through youth apprenticeship. So. Um, I'm glad I switched over. Like they were both very beneficial and I learned so much, but I think I fit more in the health services pathway. Yeah, that's awesome. So Carrie mentioned a little bit um, about through the academies, you're able to do youth apprenticeships. Amanda, talk about your youth apprenticeship experience and what that was like for you. Yeah, so I was very excited um, going into getting my CNA certification because previously to it, I worked at a nursing home and I still do work at that same nursing home for about like a year and a half. Um, and I really did enjoy like the pathways here, but sometimes like other people like just weren't too into it. So going into the CNA classes, I was like enthralled. I was really happy because everyone who did the CNA class and signed up for it wanted to be there. Like everyone was passionate about it and they truly enjoyed doing the skills and taking the time to learn together. And that was just like a complete different world for me. Like I, I, you know, I just wasn't used to it. So getting my certification in the class and already having like the knowledge of how to like properly study really helped me succeed in the class and pass. And then also like having clinical experience and previous experience in the nursing home really helped me during my clinical. So it was really fun. That's awesome. So what is, what does the future have in store for you? What's life after Horlick look like? So I'm going to Carthage College for nursing next year. Um, I'm very, very excited. I, um, I'm nervous because I know it's going to be a hard career for sure, but I think I'm definitely going to enjoy myself and be able to succeed. And then hopefully after um, nursing, I'd love to specialize in neonatal care and possibly be um, um, a neonatal nurse practitioner through graduate school. But obviously we'll see what happens when the time comes. But either way, I would love to work in labor and delivery or pediatrics for nursing. That's awesome. Just out of curiosity, um, you know, it was mentioned that you guys started high school during COVID, and that was probably the most unique thing that any of us on this podcast right now will go through in our entire lifetime. Did your career choice or your educational pathway choice have, you know, ha did did COVID and ha in going through all of that have any, um, you know, sway or did it help make your decision in any way that nursing was something that you wanted to do? just because it was so prevalent in our lives for so for a few years? I, I think it for sure did a little bit. 
but um it wasn't like a huge driving factor um because even previously to covid like i've always loved the hospital setting mm-hmm. um like as bad as it's going to sound like when my my mom she was in the hospital um like five six years back um she had brain aneurysms and um like that was such like a high stress situation and um i mean like i think i threw up like 10 times that day it was horrible but that being said um it was one of those moments where i was like i want to do what these people are doing to save my mom like i want to be in this situation and i love the healthcare field um and then covid definitely it was also like um a little bit of a driving push because I was like, I wish I could help these people. But at the same time, it was such like a terrifying situation that I was grateful I wasn't involved at that time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're, that is uh, quite the story. And hopefully today your mom is doing great. Oh, she's uh, great. (laughs) I'm sure very proud. Yeah. Awesome. So Corbin from um, Park High School. So not to sound weird or anything, but I actually knew your name even before we ever met just a little bit ago because your story at the Skills USA competition made its way all through our central offices. So talk a little bit about, um, first of all, just talk a little bit about the pathway you chose and then tell your Skills USA story. All right. So it's actually a a pretty funny story uh, about the pathway I chose. Um, I actually wanted to do culinary arts as, as a freshman. But uh, I was also taking the small engines class, and I uh, I really enjoyed all the hands-on work, and I was pretty good at the book work. So on a whim, I decided to go with the automotive pathway. Uh, with the pathway, uh, I, I joined it in my sophomore year. We took a, a field trip out to ride after our electrical unit. So uh, because they had just gotten the brand new electric buses, mm. And uh, that's when my uh, my teacher goes, you're the only student I'm going to talk to about this, but how does a youth apprenticeship with ride sound? And and I like the sound of it. I, at first, I was kind of hesitant on it a little bit, but I think I would uh, really enjoy it. And it turned out to be true. So uh, midway through the first semester in my junior year, uh, we got the, the ball rolling and and I had my first day on November 28th, and I've been there ever since. Uh, and I'm actually working full time now since I started there. That's awesome. And you're their first ever youth apprentice. Yep. Yep. So you've set the bar high. Oh, yeah. And I, I've heard that a lot. <laughs> So you um, earned second place in the Skills USA state competition at the college level, which yep. is quite the accomplishment. Talk a little bit um, about that project and how you you know earned that title. So me and my teacher, we were working um, a couple late nights, uh, learning all the all the stuff that I would be tested on, and and I found it kind of funny because everything we'd practiced was exactly what I got tested on, <laughs> and uh, and so. There is that portion of it. My job has definitely helped me with the hands-on skills needed for Skills USA, because um, I'm just doing it every day, and it's become you know a second nature to me. Um, there was uh, 12 stations. Uh, each one was 15 minutes, and uh, the the first station I remember because it was measuring, doing precision measuring on a differential. And I, and I just smiled right away. The first few questions I was like, oh yeah, I know this. Cause that was the most recent thing we had just practiced the, uh, the week before. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. That is great. Thank you. I want to open it up, um, just a little bit and, and kind of throw this question out there to all of you. So most students, you know, I've been in this job for a long time and a lot of the times we hear from students that their most memorable, Um, experience or maybe a highlight of their career as a teacher or teachers, you know, someone that they would never forget. Who are those teachers for you guys and and why? So uh, Sergeant Berrios here, he runs the JROTC program. Uh, As I first came into high school, I was a little more shy and not as open. Uh, Like an opportunity like this, I would never accept it for when (laughs) I first started. But he, uh, his program really built up my confidence and, and, and I thank him for that. And then uh, Mr. Kobrigger for the automotive pathway. He's changed my my high school 
career in, in too many ways to to mention. So that's so awesome. those are my two teachers that I that I give a round of applause to. Very, very cool. Can go next. I have a couple, but for sure my freshman year coming into, I would probably thank Mrs. Stapleman as well as Miss Cervera. Um, Cervera has all helped me so much in English. That was also like always my, my struggle class, but she's always helped me like stay after school or like before school during lunch hours or free periods just to help me out. Miss Stapleman's always helped me just stay organized with my work, which is very important, not even for high school, but for college as well, because in college, there's no one telling you to finish this or do this. So that way you can organize yourself with it. And then Going into like sophomore, junior, and senior year, Miss Winnie has helped me so much with everything. She's helped me get involved with clubs and just helping around teachers and students with, for example, like Vita before, I've learned how to do taxes and file taxes for our community. But since I've learned it through her, I also was able to help students in our her classes by learning how to do taxes for the community as well. That's awesome. Um, a couple of my most memorable teachers off the top of my head would be my math teacher from my sophomore and junior year named Miss Altoff. She is such a sweet person and I genuinely think she has changed me for the better because she's always been there for me. Um, honestly, previously to meeting her, I was sort of nervous to reach out for help, for like any extra help, but she made me so comfortable. She would meet with me during lunch, during um, advisory, after school, like no matter what it was, and she would always be there for me if I was anxious or nervous for a test and just looking for ways to like calm me down. Um, and on top of that, I also really um, had a, a, a teacher of mine named Mr. Brian has had an impact on me. He was my sophomore year history teacher. Um, going into his class, like after freshman year being online, I kind of like, I wasn't exactly sure how to study or how to, you know, get good testing skills. Um, and so I went into a test thinking like, oh, I got it. Like I'll just wing it. And I completely flunked it. And I had tears rolling down my face. It was um, a lot, you know, I'm a very, I was very anxious about it. But we started working together and figuring out what worked best for me and um, started to get to know each other as a student and a teacher and what works best for us. And he's just been there for me. And both of them leading up to my senior year, Miss Althoff and Mr. Brian, have written me so many um uh, recommendations letters for like scholarships and for college in general and they always check in on me and I just I truly am um, very grateful for them. Carrie we don't have to share how many years it's been since we were in high school but I don't know about you but I still remember my most memorable teacher do you? Absolutely I went into teaching because of her. Yeah so those those folks that you named you guys are gonna when you're 10, 15, 20 years from now you're still gonna remember them because that's how much of an impact teachers have um, on our lives and on your lives. To to kind of close out your senior year, we always like to ask students, you know, there's kids coming from middle school into high school and advancing grades. If you had to give one piece of advice to incoming freshmen who are just about to start their high school journey, what would it be? Corbin, we can start with you. Um, it would definitely be a pick your pathway very wisely. Um and all your elective teachers, I I think I've learned more in my elective and my pathways uh, relating to the real world than I have uh, my core classes. And I'm not saying that you don't need your core classes because uh, all your core classes go into your, you know, pathways and everything at the same time. They kind of backbeat on each other. Just pick, pick your pathway well, and uh, that will lead to what you want to do? Um, I'd probably say just to not be afraid to take any opportunities and chances. If you may think it might be like difficult or hard, just try it, go for it. You'll learn from it as well as maybe learn something that you'll end up liking and enjoying to do for your future. Yeah, similarly, I would say um, stay true to yourself and don't be afraid of change because your opinions and your thoughts can change. Um, so when picking a pathway, it's okay if you're not certain if you don't like it. I mean, all you wouldn't know until you try. So I would say stay true to yourself and be able to accept change in who you are. Awesome. Well, I know that anyone listening would certainly appreciate that. And I think that advice even maybe goes for some adults out there as well. Carrie, from your lens, the, we had the opportunity to talk to these three students who all pretty, pretty much for the most part have very different experiences within their high school careers, the pathways they chose, the, the direction that they went. Um, 
does this kind of just play into what we repeat over and over that everyone really can find their fit? Absolutely. And, and that's the whole beauty of it. It's, it's like trying on clothes, right? Like you're not necessarily going to like it the first time. And that's the whole point of it. We want you to try things on, experience them, see what you like, see what you don't like. And we're finding that people who are graduating out of the academy model are so pointed, as you could see even from these three examples, in exactly what they like, what they don't like. Um, they had their they're walking away from high school with a bigger head on their shoulders because they've taken advantage of all the opportunities given to them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a huge part of it as well. Well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to um, chat with me today. I wish you guys nothing but the best in your future and enjoy graduation and all of the fun things that that come along with that. Carrie, thanks for being here with us as well. And listeners, thank you for joining us and watch for additional episodes of Are You in the Know coming soon. Hey, are you in the know listeners? We know summer break hasn't started yet, but now is the time to think about enrolling new students for the fall to ensure you avoid registration lines, receive communications from your students' teachers, and have your students start the school year on time. If your student is already enrolled in RUSD, you're all set. But if you're enrolling a new kindergartner or coming from a different school district, get to it. Head to rusd.org slash enroll or visit our Welcome Center for help enrolling in person. All you need is your child's birth certificate and proof of address. We look forward to welcoming your child to our schools this fall.